Hey, have you heard of the term about life trade? Probably not. But you've never expected that this is actually a major part of Singapore's history, the colonial trading port in the 90th and 20th century. Well then, today, Ryan, Chunkyat, Jared, and I, Koja, from Raffles Institution, will tell you what this is all about. World life trade is the selling or exchanging of wild animals and plant resources with people. We aim to find out about low involvement in the wildlife trade and factors that encourage them to partake in it. All caught up? Cool. Now let's take a walk down memory lane. Hey there, we start in colonial Singapore. This rock shows the earliest signs of the trade. European men showing their exotic pets at a rate in Singapore, with large crowds gathered to watch. With this, we can see that this was a form of entertainment for the wealthy. Around this time, exotic animals began to interest the community, encouraging more trade. Locals in Singapore also saw this as an opportunity to benefit from, as it began the rich history of the wildlife trade in Singapore. Now, let us move on to the year 1933. In this source, we can see a shop at 532 North Ridge Road, called Chop Ju Sun Hin. The source shows poor birds in cages hanging from the ceiling as well as the crates and extra cages used for transporting them just messily lying about. This suggests there is a high supply of birds for such a large demand for these exotic animals. Also, there were many customers and workers in the shop. Hence, with this prompt us to think there is a high manpower to serve the large customer base and shows us that local participation in the water trade was very high at the time. As we come back to the present, here's an article by NLP about the wild encounter in Kowloon, Singapore. Reading closely, we see that the locals too had clear motivations to be involved in wildlife trade. As hunting equipment became more and more advanced, more and more locals took part in hunting for a living. The government even offered $50 for successful hunters, a sign of early local participation. Aside from the monetary rewards from hunting and trading of wildlife, there was also a motivation for self-protection from these wild animals. In summary, we can see that locals actively participated in the trade for economic and recreational reasons. High demands for exotic animals were made easily profitable, and buyers wanted to follow the trend set by others. Also, to ensure a safe community for everyone to live in, as potential threats of wildlife were hunted and sold. Simply, this was a win-win situation for both parties. However, this fact was ever highlighted as a problem to the authorities, and instead tracked on for many years in colonial Singapore. Despite efforts by some person groups to reduce active participation by local skin, this problem was never effectively resolved. Over time, this deteriorated the wildlife environment and many species faced extinction. Thankfully, Singapore implemented laws to cut the trade and joined the Convention and International Trade of Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora in 1986. In summary, we hope that we have addressed the curiosity about the rich history of the wildlife trade in Singapore. We are so grateful to share this topic with all of you, and thank you for listening.